Hey, uh, it's Jacob here. Hope you're well. I just want to do a bit of an update. I had my first cognitive behaviour therapy session on Wednesday. It was really interesting. Um, got to talk about where um, what my, what my beliefs are, core beliefs are, and. It was quite interesting, really, because um, obviously I had to <laughs> revisit my childhood thing again, you know, and I've bored you all with my videos about growing up in the care system. Um, yeah, so it kind of, obviously, it kind of became very clear to me that a lot of what's going on now are beliefs that I established as a child. And it's funny how um, with my spiritual beliefs, I have people around me um, who aren't very emotionally supportive. And that's the main thing I need is emotional support. It was very, and it's not a criticism or judgment, it's, it's what I've consciously chosen, obviously what I'm consciously chosen in terms of people around me, you know, and the kind of, Kind of what was installed in me when I was growing up about being in care and about my value as a human being. Um, basically, my entire sense of self was completely annihilated, really, um, through going into the care system, through being bullied um, by the staff, by the other kids, being bullied in school by the kids for being in the children's home. You know, um, it's kind of no wonder. <laughs> <laughs> all this happened anyway so I end up crying during the session because it brought up emotions and most of the crying was because I really really want to be better I really want to be the confident outgoing guy I am and I am confident outgoing and I'm happy and I'm relaxed with myself I'm a very um, charismatic outgoing friendly guy you know and how an odd set of circumstances has really put me in a place where, you know, either because, um, yeah, where, where, where I'm not able to go out and socialise, you know, it's a lot how I can spend weekends, like I've said before, mm. and this is the truth, I can go weekends after weekends mm. after weekends and not seeing anyone mm. or talking to anyone. You know, they in, in prisons, they put prisoners in solitary confinement as a punishment, as a punishment, a punishment, yeah? So, um, you can imagine how it can be for someone who has a very outgoing, friendly, social side to themselves, who's stuck at home, not seeing anyone or talking to anyone um, for weekends after weekends after weekends. And then going into a job where you can be on your own, and where I can be on my own in the office sometimes, um, well, for days at a time, <laughs> and um, in situations where people don't communicate to me or return communication or treat me with respect, um, that's in general, it's not in any specific place. So it was very useful to kind of look at look at that and really get a sense of where my core beliefs come from to change them you know and these 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 are beliefs that manifest when I'm under emotional stress um and or situations where life happen you know like for example people cancel on me or or don't communicate back to me or don't return my messages or don't return my emails or my texts or um if I do things to people and I don't even acknowledge that I've done that for them, you know, and I've gone out my way to do something for someone who I don't even acknowledge that I've done that. Uh, when people, um, you know, when, I, when, for example, if I message on one of the apps and I'm not interested in talking to someone and I just say, I don't want to chat, um, have a good day, and then I get an abusive message back, you know, it's quite a lot of things that trigger the um unresourceful thought patterns or unresourceful patterns that happen 
you know, so it's really a case of having to manage those now. So, you know, one example is kind of like a discussion with a friend on WhatsApp about my, you know, health. And they were really quite negative about it. Oh, well, you never might not never get better and you're not going to be able to do this and you're not going to be able to do that until something, you know, these are all triggers. Uh, and they weren't intending to be nasty or anything, you know, these are all triggers that that can put me in a in a, in a negative emotional state. Uh, especially when you add, you know, to, well, the neurofibrotoma I know about and it causes me pain and, you know, people make comments about, you know, this kind of thing. My body, I'm used to that, I can deal with that because I've lived with it in my life. But we have two other health conditions which you don't know what's going on and these health conditions prevent you from from fully enjoying your life. You know, these all add into the mix the triggers that are going on and, 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 and don't, don't make, you know, make it more challenging to come from a positive point of view. It's really good to recognise all of this. Um, you know, and the fact that I was able to, you know, show compassion and understanding to the people that bullied me and compassion and understanding to my mum and my dad and I was able to forgive my stepmom and all of it showed that I am actually pretty uh, a pretty awesome guy, really, you know, that I'm a very compassionate, understanding, caring, loving um, guy who has lots of empathy for people and understanding for people and really how I guess some people in my life take advantage of that um, in regards to the way that they treat me in regards to the way that um, they will behave me in ways they wouldn't behave with other people because the other people would, would probably um, either have a go at them or, or do, you know, kind of shout at them or be cross or angry at them. But I always try to come from a compassionate and understanding point of view towards other people. And often that, that actually doesn't help me because I'm questioning whether I've done something wrong and have they cancelled on me because they don't like me and because they don't want to see me. And then I'm showing them understanding and compassion. So, oh, yeah, I understand why you're not done this. I understand this, I understand that. Um, and there's no, there seems to be little, from many circles of my little, little compassion and understanding about where I am coming from. And that's because I am, I show people compassion and understanding and empathy, you know? And I'm proud of doing that. You know, I don't want to be an arsehole. The last thing I want to be is an arsehole, you know? Uh, however, I do and can have a very judgmental side of myself, <laughs> which I guess is a shadow. So anyway, the CBT session was really, really useful. And um, you know, it's helped me realize I am, I am a decent guy. I am a fucking decent guy. I'm a great guy. I'm a very, you know, all of these things. And, and you know, because of the way I look, you know, because I'm not particularly handsome or good looking. I'm quite rough looking, you know. Um, I'd say I was quite masculine and rough looking rather than, you know, the typical kind of, you know, gay, handsome, attractive, gay guy, you know. I'm not like that and I'm fine. I'm complete, completely comfortable with the way I look, you know. Um, I wouldn't want to be really attractive and good looking because the most attractive and good looking guys are complete arseholes, you know. Um, Yeah, so, you know, because I look like that, people don't understand I actually have a very, very big heart. I'm actually a very, very caring person who has a really big heart and a lot of love for people, you know. And um, what's become clear is, is is more that love needs to be directed at myself, you know. Um, and I need to love myself more and love who I am more um irregardless of all the way that people treat me in my life and the way that um people are around me and the way they behave around me and I'm not judging these people, I'm not having a go at these people, I'm not having a moan about these people, they behave the way that they behave partly because I've allowed them to behave that way, you know. 
and um, yeah, so really, you know, I'm hoping that the CBT sessions will kind of empower me further and give me tools to really, really stop these um, kind of negative thought patterns that come in my head. But 90% of the time are a result of kind of external stimuli, you know. So any depression I have is reactive depression, you know, it's reactive to situations in my life, you know, it's not. Um, my default way of being, so I'm not a negative, fucked up person, you know, um, which is really good to know. Thank you.